to look at it, you would think, that's a chiller? You can see that right there is the heat exchanger, that big square box thing. So this hodgepodgery of piping we've got here, took a little while to figure it out. Got it. <laughs> Woo. Shouldn't be too horribly bad this time. We got a problem, Bob. This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools. Quality tools, essential support. All right, guys, so today, just gonna give you a small glimpse into what my week is usually like. So I'm here to shut down this little chiller. To look at it, you would think, that's a chiller? Now it's a little train chiller. So what it is, it's got a plate heat exchanger. So you've got air to water. So internally in there, that actually has a plate heat exchanger. And as we peek in here, you can see that right there is the heat exchanger, that big square box thing. Down here, you can see there's a ball valve down there. And that ball valve basically drains that heat exchanger out. So you've got a water line going in, you got a water line going out. So you got a flow switch, you got little bleeders here. So it comes through the wall. They've had problems with this breaking because people didn't blow it out. And that's what we're gonna do today. It's a little bit cold out today. We are October 7th. Uh, right now it's running in the morning, 49 degrees. The uh, tenants need heat and it's heat or cooling. Which one do you want? And so it's a crappy design. You've got a boiler here that does the hot water into the two reserve tanks. You got four boilers here. These are what they use to heat the building. So this hodgepodgery of piping we've got here, along with circulator pumps and stuff like that, took a little while to figure it out. They've got some of this marked with green and yellow and blue tape telling you which way. So the chiller comes through this direction, comes up, and kind of goes into this manifold here. Well, this manifold is gonna get isolated. I closed that line there, but I really didn't need to, but I'm gonna go ahead and just close it as redundancy. And then you can see that other line right here, the blue one coming up. I've got it shut right there. So what you've got here is water circulating through here over and up to the pump. This is a uh, primary secondary type line. The boilers here all are pumping into this area right here. So all these little boilers come up, these little lines. Got one going up, you got one going down. You can see the little orange stickers. So you've got them all coming into here and they're all going into there. This right here is your boiler going out. This is your boiler coming back. And the water coasts through here and that is done by this circulator pump right here. So we've isolated it, that's how we've done it. That little valve there looks like it would be the drain valve. It's not, that's just a regular outside faucet. Coming up here, you can see they have the auto fill here. You got a bypass and check valve and backflow preventer and some other happy stuff there. I mean, this thing is so, so freaking old. It uh, was supposed to get updated, but they sold the place and we were gonna do a whole full blown update. So the water on the floor that you see there is for me draining it down. Yeah, it could probably went to a hose, but they got floor drain in here. So what we did is we closed that ball valve there and that ball valve there. You have a feed and bleed is what I'm gonna call it right here. So I've opened both of those up and that let the pressure off of it. And those lines go out to the chiller. What we're gonna do is we're gonna blow nitrogen through both of those and that's gonna blow it out to that heat exchanger and blow the last remaining bits out. So that's what we're doing. So we got a hose right here. We're gonna open that up and we're gonna blow that out, wrap a rag around it and then we'll pretty much be done after that. We've already shut the power off to it, which that was kind of a treat trying to learn where that was at. Now you can see a little better. Things I do for you guys. Okay, you can see there, those lines go that direction. Sort of can. So you can see we got our hose in there. Let's turn that nitrogen on and let's blow the sucker out. Look at that so much that you got water coming back on this direction over here. See that? I was gonna blow it out to the other side, but honestly, this is doing better, better than what I anticipated. I guess we'll just go ahead and blow it the other direction here. Okay. Good enough, that's about all I got left on that. There you go. And it should all be free and clear. I wrote this here for them to make it a little easier. Because uh, they got, they, as usual, they go through maintenance people like quite often. 
this is the kind of things that I do sometimes that are just like, okay, how do you make that into a video? But not everything is glamorous. This was supposed to have gotten all updated, but like I said, they were gonna sell it. So I believe we installed this boiler here and I think we updated an expansion tank. We did these. And I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn on those boilers and make sure they work. That way he doesn't call back in a few days later and uh, saying it doesn't work. Um, this expansion tank is quite amazing. See how they have a ball valve in there going to the expansion tank. You should not have a ball valve on an expansion tank. And then here's another expansion tank for the actual boiler. So that there is for the water heaters. So that's on the, um, that's basically a shock arrestor going to the sinks. This one here is for the actual boilers. Once again, ball valve. When you have a ball valve, my feeling is you should always take the handle off of it so it's not accidentally closed by people that don't have a clue. This auto bleed here obviously is closed and been cranked down with a um, pair of pliers. That should just be a manual bleed because people aren't ever gonna, yeah, it just gets gummed up. It's just garbage. It appears to me everything else is closed and you got stuff like this where if somebody hits that, that's just gonna blow hot water in your face. That kind of suck. It looks to me like our water pressure somewhere around the uh, 18, 19 pound area, which is fine. It's not hot or cold. Not sure on this thing. There is a micro programmer they call it here. Holy mackerel. Looks like a TI-88 or some crap, or what do you want to call it? That is... How is it still working? I guarantee you this was made in America back in the day when we used to care about what we made. Not so much anymore. Sad, sad, sad. And then look at all those delay timers and all that hodgepodgery. That is no schematic. One, yeah, two, three, four. And that unfortunately is how it controls it. These appear to be probably, oh, they're off. There you go. There you go. So they're probably calling for heat. Sounds to me like they're getting ready to fire off. These things are all McLean Golds. Man, oh man, oh man, oh man. These need cleaned. You know that's not happened. That may have to happen another time. There goes one of them. Ooh, that was concussion. Uh, is this thing run on natural gas? It's hard to say. We're out here in the middle of nowhere. Yep, there's a big old monster regulator, and it is cubic foots. Yes, I know it's feet. Got the step down regulator. It appears to me that it's natural gas. Usually they put these places where they've got it available. Okay, so there is our actual natural gas low pressure. So it is natural gas, fire suppression lines, and all that happy stuff. Well, let's see if we're getting some warm water coming out. There's something just stepped up. There was a timer. So that one's putting up. Ooh, that don't sound good. Nice. Maybe they should replace this. That's what they were supposed to have done. So that one's working. So they've got a exhaust system here. This would be your fresh air. Here's fresh air here. That's what I was wonder wondering if, uh, what do we got for air? <sighs> Yeah, so they get that monster door cut out there. Yeah, pretty much every appliance in here, all partaking of that air. I think it's one square inch for so many BTU, and obviously it's worked this long. One doesn't work this long. Well, yeah, it doesn't know one way or the other if it's actually working. It's just timing them one to the next to the next. So after so many minutes, this one comes on, so many minutes, this one comes on, this one comes on. This one's got issues. I'd like to see this one turned off. I think we need to get you some prices on some new equipment because I mean this stuff is yeah you're gonna sink a crap ton of money into it you might be able to get away with one larger one this is usually what we use a lot of times we got that and then we have a commercial grade one that's even bigger than this right. and that would be the better way to go because you got higher efficiency going on like right now you got all this combustion air being used in here for that for this this I mean you got a big old hole in that wall, uh, on the door over there for the combustion air which you know if it don't pull that in here, then you're going to well, pull it from the building. Cover, cover what? This Don't you cover that one, no. Well, they said it pulls all the air through here. 
that pulls it out of the room. What are you going right. to get it in there for the and combustion? I'm like, no. Like, I don't think you can have that covered. When I came in here and interviewed, we were going through looking through stuff, and I'm like, I don't think you can have cardboard on it. No, you can't. And she goes, well, the state comes through and inspect it. They didn't see anything, and I'm like... Oh. Yeah, I think you got some issues. I'd like to see if it's starting to get warmer going out. This one's working, too. Okay. And then this one's just getting ready to kick on. So basically this one here has got an it's got a draft motor for sure going out, but I mean, you might be able to get away with just three of them. I still haven't seen what you got in the room. Do they have a thermostat on each room? Oh, yeah. Okay, so what we did is we shut that one boiler off that had the uh, draft motor issue, and he's gonna run the other three that are firing off fine. They don't wanna do anything just yet, because I guess they just bought the building uh, about eight months ago. They're already replacing some package units up on the roof, and uh, this here is back together. Uh, so other than that, that's about it. We're out here in the rural area, so that's probably a fire department uh, siren of some sort. That's kind of what my morning is. What this does, it goes to air handlers that are in each individual room, and when the uh, thermostat calls for heat or cooling, it turns on the fan and it blows air through the coil that's either hot water or cold water. And that's about it. None of it's treated from what I'm hearing, which is pretty bad. So it's on to the next one. All right, guys, we're already in the middle of the repair, but uh, we're out here to repair this compressor. It was uh, alpha and oil. As you can see here, it rubbed through the back of this. That ate in a big chunk there. Yeah, I had to sawzall it out, but here's the difference. All the crap fell down to this. When you're done, you clean it out and you got nothing in there. There's, there's nothing you can do. Even with my fancy cutter I've got, which nobody has any of these here. I mean, these are $140 cutter. You can't get that when Bone was idiot and put the thing right up against this back wall. And you can see right there, it was right up against it. And that thing was rubbing up against it. That was from the factory like that. So we're putting a whole new vibration reducer in here. We're gonna braze it in out here on the uh, top of the condenser here and get her back into place. So we're just gonna clean this up. I'm just doing the best we can to what we got to work with. We got mega bucks inside there in production that can't get too warm. Nope, no problem. Got an SOS. Yep, pretty much. She's <laughs> like, we got bad, we got bad things going on. We need you now. There we go. And then we'll tap it in a little further when we get it in the spot. Cool. We went in there, figured out our length. We got it marked how far we had to be in there. Pretty much checking. Fairly level there. I mean, we got a little wiggle room there, and we're good there. So we're gonna just drag us over the edge. We'll heat that thing up and get that one done first because this is the critical one to make sure it stays, you know, 90 degrees. So we figure it's going to be a whole lot easier out here. Um, obviously, you ain't running nitrogen through this. We're just going to have to scrape the, uh, the carbon out when we're done. That's what those, my different brushes are for. One of them things. You just do what you can do as best you can do it and move on. And we're going to drain this puppy down quick, I'm sure. There we go. All better now. There we go. Heat her up, pull her in, pull her in. We want to try to make it pull all the way over to the edge. That gives it the most strength possible. We don't want just a little bead around the corner. It doesn't do us nothing. There we go. And then we'll take the next stick. We'll hook it onto that stick. Kind of. There we go. Just like a TIG welder here. And see, I can sit there and do quarter inch copper with this bad boy, or I can do this big monster stuff. You can crown it like I'm gonna do here for giggles. I don't really think it's that big a deal. And our gas is almost down to zero, so we probably aren't gonna to get too far into this one. 
I always love it when they screw me and only give me 150 pounds. Once you make a connection, you know, you get a little bit of molten breeze in there. It'll help pull that heat into the next pipe. It'll conduct. There we go, see what happens. There we go. Now it starts flowing all pretty like. A lot of heat on that center. Come in. Bring it over this way. There we go. That'll get us to that point there. Let's go ahead and get this rewetted. So we've got a new seal for this, luckily. I mean, it'll fit perfect. Funny thing is, you talk to some of these older guys, which I'm one of the older guys, I've been around 30 years, and they've never even heard of this stuff. Oh, it's gonna cause problems. It's freaking oil, dude. Yep. I don't even really see that much shit inside there. Oh, I do now. Well, let's um, scrub that with the brush and then blow it out with my blower. Watch this crap, this will be great. Ready? Watch this. Well, we got a good old chunk worth of it. Now you can take out these panels here on top, which has given me a lot more room. All right, there we got it in place. Started there. We're gonna probably use this and we're gonna see if we can get that, that coupling off. I'd like to put a coupling on there and just make it reuse it, but the problem I'm worried about is then I'll have a hard time putting my clamp on there. Uh, everything we got going on here is the uni weld a torch head. So, but yeah, this is all Monday. This is, we're still in the same, same day. Look at that, Isn't that pretty? That refrigerant burning pretty good, ain't it? Maybe I can get it from over here. Got it. <laughs> Woo! That was bad. I can tell you right now, they didn't know what they were doing when they were brazing. I mean, I may not be perfect, but look at that right there. They didn't pull into that thing at all. What a joke. What a joke. What a joke. It's a joke, man, it's a joke. Yeah, with a little bitty torch set, I got that bad boy off. Ain't that something else? All right, let's see what we can do here with this hunky-dory thing. Now, obviously I am not running nitrogen through this thing here, even though I could. Well, actually I can't because there's no, no things. You gotta understand, it don't make it right that it's bigger, but fact is, if I contaminate this, this is 100 and 168 pounds. If I contaminate the 168 pounds, which obviously ain't all, because we have a leak, then I am going to be up a crick. We get the little grinder out, grind off some of the slag from the outside. Worked out really good. A little bit like that. That kind of shows you what we're dealing with. So we got a lot better, hella, hella lot better what it was before. Then we get this baby running. Squirt it for some oil. Squirt it for some refrigerant. And roll out. Because that's where we're at. Shouldn't be too horribly bad this time. We got a problem, Bob. Just about out of gas already. 150 pounds is already down to 50. And my worry is I'm not going to have enough gas to get done. Right now we got the Milwaukee fan there blowing it away from me. So I am going to heat this thing up as fast as possible and get the thing breezed in fast as possible. Cause I ain't got time to wait for, and we still got to change freaking filter dryers and stuff yet, which I might bring it down to temperature first and then do it from there. So we're gonna get this panel back on here and we do have it locked out. 
I don't fool around at all with 480, 460. Uh, no, I don't play games with it. It's too damn dangerous. Um, so we got it. We verified it first when I first got here, made sure all the blades were out and that we had no voltage on it. Um, we're going to, like I said, we're going to get, uh, we're going to pull fast back on it because I mean we're expanding gas the whole damn time. Obviously, it's why it freaking about gas the living crap out of me. Um, and then uh, we'll get this thing uh, running. The food that's in there is very expensive. <sighs> so I've been told as much as a million dollars. You know, what kind of food costs that kind of money. And they have a, another unit that takes care of this section, but the compressor was bad on it, which was a problem we found. And they just approved it, so that's gotta get fixed too. So normally they have two, two things going. Here's a perfect example where that's needed. Uh, this is 480. I'm sure there's an outlet somewhere around here. I'm gonna pull this thing down. Uh, we're, we'll be lucky we even get into a negative. I think there's that much leaking through. My uh, torque wrench doesn't go high enough to make a difference, so we're just gonna do it by hand. Okay, we're pumping that into suction. We uh, pulled a vacuum on it, got it up to a positive pressure, so we're dumping it in here. As soon as we're done with that, we'll start adding refrigerant. We're gonna change the filter dryers uh, here in a day or so. They did approve the compressor, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. Uh, at the same time, right now, we need to get the product down to temperature. So that's what we're working on now. We've got it running. It's already back to 41. Shot oil all over myself because I was bleeding the hose. And so we got our oil level up. We pumped about a gallon in there. That's where all that freaking water, they thought was water, but oil <laughs> and uh, got our electrical back in there. Side glass is full. I dumped maybe 10, 15 pounds in there and I noticed that it isn't flashing at all. It's warm but not hot. Sprayed all my fittings. We're only running two fans down there. Don't know if this one's got issues. Maybe it's just not high enough pressure. It's crazy is we just found this unit low the other day and was coming back to do a leak check, but none of this oil was here then. You can see how we got it now. I mean, it's straight, it's clamped. It's level, everything's pretty good. Supposedly it's like 40 horse or something is what one of the guys was saying. I'll tell you something made it a little easier too on uh, Getting some of these square sockets made by Sun X Tools. Gave me a half inch, 916s, 5.8s, 7.16s. So we got the uh, different ones here, so looking good. All right, guys, so ended up only needing about 20 pounds, 15 pounds, I don't know. I thought we were going to be dumping all these different bottles in there, so didn't end up need it. Uh, it cycled off just a minute ago. Oil levels are good, so. Everything's looking fine with it. These are variable speed uh, motors here on the side here. So that's why they're going kind of slow. I was wondering why it seemed like they were going so slow at first, but typical repair. Other than that, we got it running. We're all set to go. Till next time, guys, we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Later.